So in this video, we're going to prove the product rule of differentiation, which I'm sure is familiar to you from calculus. So written out in full formality, the product rule says that if you have two functions, f and g, that are both real valued functions defined over some subset of the real line, and for simplicity we've taken our subset as the closed interval from a to b, and both functions are differentiable at some point p inside their domain, then you can conclude that the third function that you get by producting f with g is also differentiable at this point p where both the other two functions that made it up are differentiable and it will have derivative equal to f prime g plus f g prime where all of these things are evaluated at p. So let's prove this. So we're going to start then with f and g that are both differentiable at the point p and we want to show that this new function constructed by producting f and g together is also going to be differentiable at p. So if it's going to be differentiable at the point p, then this limit must exist. The limit as t approaches p of f of t, g of t, which is the function evaluated at t, minus the function evaluated at p, which is f of p times g of p, all divided by the change in the domain, which is t minus p. And we need to show that one, this exists, and two, that it has value equal to this. So the first thing we're going to do is a brilliantly sneaky move. We're going to turn this into something that looks more complicated by subtracting off and then adding back the same thing. So this is actually exactly the same thing as this. You've still got the same denominator here, and then the numerator has just been expanded slightly. So you've still got the two initial things from the numerator here. f of t, g of t is here, minus f of p, g of p is here. These two things in the middle I have now added in, and they are the exact same thing, but one is the minus of the other. So we've got minus f of p g of t here, and then we've got plus f of p g of t. So we've just subtracted off and added the same thing back again. Now why on earth would we do that? Well, it's because we're going to be able to spot a very helpful result from doing this. Our next move is going to be to split this complicated mess into two separate fractions so that it looks even more complicated, but we're going to be able to spot something brilliant here. So it's now going to be equivalent to the limit as t approaches p, and we've taken these two things into one fraction, and then these two things into a separate fraction. So we've got f of t g of t minus f of p g of t over t minus p, plus, and then these two, f of p g of t, that's that, minus f of p g of p over t minus p. So all of this complicated mess is still just equivalent to this. So we've now made a big step forward. So I claim that this thing written in yellow here is equivalent to this. Firstly, let me convince you that the limits that this thing is made up of are all going to be things that exist. And then I'll convince you that combining this together by the algebra of limits is going to give you this. So let's look at these limits firstly, starting with this one here. The limit as t approaches p of g of t. That is going to exist, and indeed it's going to be equal to g of p, because we know the function g is going to be continuous at the point p, and we know that because it's differentiable at the point p, and differentiability implies continuity. So that one does exist, and is equal to g of p. This one now, the limit as t approaches p of f of t minus f of p over t minus p. That's going to exist because f is differentiable at p. So it's going to exist, and it's going to have value f prime at p. Then this is just a constant f at p. Then we've got this limit, limit as t approaches p of g of t minus g of p over t minus p. Again, that is going to exist because the function g is differentiable at p, so it's going to have value g prime at p. So all of these limits are going to exist, and overall this thing written in yellow here is going to have this value written down here. Now let me convince you that this is going to be equivalent to this. We can combine these limits together using the algebra of limits. Let's start by combining these two together. So because we know both of these exist, we know that we can combine them together, producting this with this, and its limit will exist. So let's times this by this. So we'll get g of t times f of t, that's that bit, minus g of t times f of p, which is this bit here, all over t minus p. Then, here, because we know this limit exists, we've got a constant multiple of it. Again, by the algebra of limits, we can bring this constant inside the limit, and we'll know that the limit of that constant times this thing is still going to exist. So let's bring this inside here, and of course we'll get f of p times g of t, that's that, minus 
f of p times g of p, which is this, all over t minus p. So you'll get this thing. And then we can combine those two limits together because we know they're both going to exist using the algebra of limits. So we'll overall get that the limit as t approaches p of this thing plus this thing must exist and it must have the same value as this, which has value equal to this. So bingo, we're done. This thing equals this thing, which equals this thing, which equals this thing, which equals this thing. And I've now written that out in a slightly neater form, bringing the f prime to the front, the g there, and then we've got f g prime. This is exactly the product rule. So this derivative is going to exist. It's going to have value this. So the function f times g is going to be differentiable at p with derivative equal to this.